let me tell you something about this show. The men, especially Sherrod, are nice to look at. And I like to follow the show. I do like their personalities outside the show. But God damn it, these niggas know that can confuse me. Business, y'all. This be your boy Scott, and we're here for another review of the Real High Boys Houston. So let's get right on into this shit. So, um, Kenny, August, and Braylon, they're at the airport and they're discussing the issues within the friend group. Now, I don't know if you guys know this by now, but DeAndre, DeAndre is not going on a trip with his sixty self. He's not going on a trip. So, um, you know, Kenny was basically talking about all the issues amongst the group. He wants to make sure that everybody is on the same accord. Are we friends? Are we not? Are we all of this? Are we that? And it's just crazy because I don't understand this group of friends. I mean, I know when you have a large, not necessarily a large group, when you have a circle of friends, there are going to always be some type of issue at some point in time because y'all hang out with each other so much and y'all going to get on each other's nerves. But um, Braylon, um, a.k.a. Cynthia Bailey, is um, looking for a resolve and want to make sure that things are, you know, on point and everybody gets along. Kenny calls them all out for being drama queens, including... August, who calls himself the drama king, but August don't think that he's a drama king. He just thinks that he's very opinionated and he speaks his mind and he's not overly dramatic. Bullshit. You speak your mind, you're overly dramatic and that's just what it is. So the boys arrive in um, Atlanta, okay? And we're introduced to other guys by the name of Lemis, Archie. I think those are the only two that's, that, we're, that we're introduced to. Um, Lemis and Archie. So, there's a friend of Ashton's by the name of Lemis, okay? He's quirky, re weird, crazy, everything that Ashton likes about him. And so, um, it is what it is. So, Ashton lays down the law with Braylon, okay? He's calling him a tag along. He doesn't really know where he fits in. And he's saying that um, he only knows him through August. He only knows him through August as August's tag along. I feel like that's kind of disrespectful to keep on calling a man a tag along. He didn't ask to be in this situation if I'm not mistaken. Um, he wanted, he did want to know some new people as he lived here and lived there in Houston. He wanted to get to know some people. August brought him around. That's his key to the whole little situation. So at the end of the day, you know, of course, he's going to be latching on to August a little bit more until he gets separate relationships with everybody else. Okay, I get that you want to get to know him outside of August, but you don't have to say it like, I don't like tag I don't like follow, like, I don't like that. You know what I mean? Like, you could have pulled him to the side to have that conversation instead of having it in front of everybody else. Like, you know, I ain't really care for that. They go out to eat, and then they was about to go to a club, but August wanted to go to a kickback, which I, uh, Ashton was like, oh, he want to go to a kickback because he's bald and on a budget. Bitch. When I tell you that, uh, that shit was funny as hell, no disrespect to August, but Ashton was going in on y'all in them damn confessions. Like, he was going to, especially to August. He was going in on August the whole damn show in them damn confessionals. Now, I want to know who the hell made Ashton pissed off how long ago was it since he filmed that shit? Because he was going to fuck in on these folks on this show. Like, for real, for real. And if they have a reunion, I already know that folks going to be coming for her head after the fact. So, at the kickback, they was asking questions about who's the top or the bottom and all this other stuff. And one thing I will say about Archie on this show is that Archie made me laugh the whole damn episode. He called himself a fun size top or whatever. Don't ask me what my position is because it ain't none of your goddamn business. Just know that I ain't got no label. Right. So, um, Br Braylon and August leave the kickback and they start having a conversation about the things that has been bothering Braylon. Now, Braylon, um, is like, you know what I'm saying? Um, he don't like, he, he don't like what he's been seeing within his group. And he also don't like what Ashton has said to him earlier that day, which if I was Braylon, I wouldn't like it either. But being that Braylon is soft-spoken, he's not really going to say too much for a confrontation. And I'm not really confrontational either, but bitch, when you push that fucking button and you've offended me, bitch, you going to know about it. And Ashton needed to know about it. Honestly, he did, because I think he did a bit much in that situation. Now, I wouldn't call Ashton a bully. I wouldn't call him that, because I, I can't see him being nobody's bully child. But I would say that I wouldn't call him no bully. 
I would say that he just did a bit much. But, at the same time, I can understand why August would say that he's a bully. After that, August gets a phone call from his friend, Keith. Someone, someone else that just popped up. I don't know who the hell this is. But apparently, Keith got an issue with Sherrod, my baby daddy, in my head. And, um, Keith. So, drunk-ass Sherrod and Ken, they called this nigga. The nigga said that he gonna talk to August about the problem. Even though he got the problem with them two. And I'm just like this. If you got a problem with them two, what the fuck you calling September for? What the fuck is you calling him for? Like, I get that's your friend, but if you got an issue with them too, you bring it up with them. You know what I mean? You bring the issue to them. You know what I'm saying? So, at the end of the day, that, that's I, I don't agree with that. Like, if a motherfucker is... Uh, uh, directly approaching you about a situation like that, I would say that you need to talk to that person. Don't sit up there and talk to someone else. If, they, if that person you got an issue with directly confronts you, bitch, you better be able to bring it right on back to them. And that's all I got to say. After that, Sherrod is on the phone with them, with uh, with someone, and he was basically um, talking about the situation. And it was revealed that him and Ken had a threesome with somebody. And I don't know if that somebody is the key person or somebody else, but it was something about a threesome. And I'm just like, okay, I always want to have a threesome, but I don't know who I, I don't know who I can have a threesome with. I have to be attracted to you. You have to like me, and you know, you got to be able to do the things that I want you to fucking do. And I got to be able to be comfortable with the things you want me to do. That's too much. I'm not going there. But I guess the beef was squash. Y'all, this is all I got. Because I really didn't get anything from this episode. Like, I like these guys, you know what I mean? Like, I fucks with them. But this episode, I really couldn't get nothing out. Like, it's like it's like squeezing a lemon. I couldn't get much juice out of it to do a review. However, this is what it is. I got you next week on the next review. And um, I'll holler at y'all later. All of my um social media is at the bottom. My Twitter and my Instagram. My Also, my podcast fundraiser is also at the bottom. The GoFundMe link is at the bottom. And um, be sure to like, rate, comment, subscribe, and share this video. Do whatever you see fit. And I'm out of here until next week for Hot Boys of Houston. I'll talk to you hoes later. Peace out.